Hi, I want to look at with you a problem involving solving or finding the area of an equilateral triangle given only the, the length of the radius of this equilateral triangle. <clears throat> okay, when, when somebody's, you know, if you have a little bit of experience with geometry and you're asked to find the area of a, of a triangle, uh, the first thing you probably would think of is area is equal to one half times the length of the base times the height of the triangle. And that's true, but notice in this problem we don't have the length of the base or we don't and we don't have the height. All we have is the length of the radius. So we have to figure out another way to we have to figure out a way to either find the base and the height or uh, another way altogether. And so what I want you to recognize is that and this is where um, people miss it, some people miss it when they're trying to find the area of an equilateral triangle is recognizing that it's a regular polygon, meaning all interior angles are congruent and all sides are congruent. And you know, some people think of regular polygons as pentagons and beyond with more sides, but a square and an a equilateral triangle are also regular polygons. So if I recognize that this is an equilateral triangle, that gives me another option in, in finding the area of the triangle using the formula for a regular for finding the area of a regular polygon, which is one half times the apothem times the perimeter. Okay. If we want to use this formula, we need to know what the apothem is, and we'll we'll look at that. But first, we want to uh, I want to explain what the radius is. Okay, the radius of a regular polygon is a is is a segment that goes from the center of the polygon to the vertices of the polygon. The center of the polygon is the is the is also the center of the circle that circumscribes it. Means it goes through each vertex of the polygon, whether that's a triangle or an octagon or whatever. So segment FB is a radius of this equilateral triangle. So is segment FA and FE. And what I want you to notice is these three segments are congruent. Okay, they're they're radii. So they you know the radius of a circle they're all the same length. So these are these are all congruent. <coughs> All right. What that means then is that these these three triangles that the radii divide the equilateral triangle up into are also congruent. We can show that by the side 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 postulate. Okay. All three triangles, all the all pair, all the corresponding sides are congruent. So these we know these triangles are congruent. Then these three angles here are corresponding angles, and so if the triangle is congruent, then the corresponding angles are congruent. So these three angles are congruent. That means the measure of each one of these angles is 120 degrees. We have a total of 360 for the three angles. And if we divide that into three equal parts, we get 120. Okay, we'll need to know that when we, when we come back to using this formula. All right, what about the apothem? Now, now that I've explained what the radius is, let's, let's look at what the apothem is. The apothem is a perpendicular that goes from the side of the triangle to the center of uh, the, the the polygon, okay, from the from the side of the regular polygon to the center of the regular polygon. <coughs> okay, so this is a perpendicular that I've constructed going through the side and through the center. Okay, now I'm going to construct a uh, the apothem. The apothem again goes from the side perpendicularly to the center. Let me hide this perpendicular line. Uh. All right, lost my segment. So there's my segment. Okay, it's a perpendicular that goes from the side to the center. And what I need to recognize is also, since this is an isosceles triangle, this perpendicular going from the side to the center is an angle bisector and a perpendicular bisector. Okay, that's when you when you run an altitude for an isosceles triangle from the from the base to the vertex angle, it becomes not only an altitude but um, a median, an angle bisector, and a perpendicular bisector. So it's important that we recognize that this apothem is an angle bisector and a perpendicular bisector. So that means, you know, 
this side is congruent to this side. All right. Now that we know what an apothem is, we can now start. Now we know how to, you know, we can start using the formula. Okay. Um, first thing is, is again recognizing that this is a 120 degree angle and the apothem bisects it. So that means this angle here is a 60 degree angle. And then remember, we're told the length of the radius is 6 centimeters. Okay. So if I can get the apothem and the perimeter, I can find the area of the triangle. How am I going to get the apothem or the perimeter? Well, let's start with the apothem. I'll call that A. Um, notice I've got a right triangle, but I don't have two sides of a right triangle, so I can't use a Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to have to use trig or my uh, special right triangle theorem. Okay. Let me pause this so I can pull up the special right triangle theorem um, illustration. Okay, now I have an illustration of the uh, special right triangle theorem for a 30, 60, 90 triangle, for, which is what we have here. If this is 90 and 60, then this is 30. So remember, we're going to look for the, we're going to find the length of the apothem first. Okay, the apothem is the shorter leg of this right triangle. I know it's the shorter leg because it's opposite the smallest angle. The largest uh, side is going to be opposite the longest, uh, uh, largest, the longest side is going to be opposite the largest angle and so forth. All right, so this is a, we've got a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And notice that the shortest leg is half the hypotenuse. I can say it this way, you know, the hypotenuse is twice the shorter leg, so the shorter leg is going to be half the hypotenuse, which is what I have. The radius is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So A is going to equal 3. Half of 6 is 3. So now I need to find the perimeter. Um, I can't get the perimeter or uh, directly, and I can't even get a side length directly, but I can get a half side length. <clears throat> Remember, this apothem cuts this side in half because it's a, a an altitude of an isosceles triangle. Okay, so I can solve for x the side length, a uh, half side length, double that for a side length, and multiply it times three for the perimeter. The perimeter being the sum of the length of the sides. So, if the shorter leg is three then the longer leg is going to be the square root of 3 times the shorter leg. So x is equal to 3 square roots of 3. Okay. And so the perimeter, let's say, is, um, you know, let's let s equal a side length. So s is going to be 2 times a half side length. So that's 6 square roots of 3 for side length. And so then the perimeter is going to equal, let's just come down here, the perimeter is going to equal 3 times a side length, right? So that's equal to 18 square roots of 3. Okay, so now we're, la now we're ready to use our, our formula here. Area is equal to 1 half the apothem times the perimeter. So we have area is equal to 1 half times the apothem, which we said was 3, times the perimeter, which was 18 square roots of 3. So I'm going to take 1 half, let's say 1 half of, I can take 1 half of 18 if I want to do it that way. That's 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. So we have 27. Um, square roots of 3. Let's see if, what happens if I undo. Uh, Alright. Let me just scribble that. So we have 27. That's a 7. Square roots of 3 as the area of the um, the regular polygon. Now let me pause and, and get a decimal form of that. So when I use my calculator to estimate the value of 27 square roots of 3, I get 47.77 square centimeters when I round to the nearest hundredth. All right, so I hope that helps you with uh, regular polygons and finding the area of them.